starting right off on the get-go, let me state for the record that I don't own no stock in this company right here. But this right here is a real good product. It's a Fletch, it's a Flex Hone, and it's a bunch of these little balls here on them there little, see them little things that does that? It's a Flex Hone. And this particular one right here, probably if I got the paperwork out and checked up on it, done the math, I would say that I have probably honed at least 20, more than 20 cylinders I have honed with this Flex Home. And it's still as new. So when, when you get that good a service out of a tool, and if you if you have been paying attention, you know, I'm not, uh, I don't really care for them, their trick tools as, as, as I call them. You know, them uh, them real fancy tools that you get one tool that is supposed to do everything that you need. That's the only tool that you need to do everything in the shop. Uh, most of the time, I have no use for that tool. This, this is not one of them. This right here is shop equipment that will reward you uh, with your purchase of it for years to come if you take care of it. A flex home. Do the homework, leave a comment. You can see the results with just a minimal, minimal amount of uh, honing, of uh, pass through. Do your homework, leave a comment. Time to hone out the cylinder. Just a spark plug. This is the bigger size right here. The hone. Uh, let's use a, let's use a flex home on this one. It, it's, it's the, it's the kind of the home of choice. This happens to be the size for the spark plug model. They come in different sizes, the, these little flex home deals here. And, and, uh, you know, if you're going to do any work on any of these old engines, more than one, you sure do need these. I think this is for the... Model 92 Maytag. I think that's a Briggs and Stratton, and that's a that's a, a, a like a five or six horsepower something. And and there is some more. I'm not going to drag them all out, but there is a smaller size than this one that you use on the igniter model. The, they they the one of them is too big for the other one. It does take two of them. The, uh, and let me just, just kind of just kind of generically throw in a remark that these these homes right here, you know, everybody's got one, and you can do more damage with this home right here than uh, than I can fix. <laughs> the uh, the problem is is the grid of stones that you use and just the way it's made. The just it's it's it, this is not a professional tool by no means. A cylinder hone operates entirely different than this. If you need a cylinder hone, then that's what you should use, not this thing. Uh, and I, I have used this. There is occasions you will use it, but use it discriminately. And if you if you do need to use this thing, use it very very sparingly, because it's really easy if you have too coarse of a rock on here to get the cylinder too big. And at that time, then it's all for naught. They do come in all different sizes, you know. Uh, and and you you will find occasions that you will need these kind of trick tools, but not as daily use. Okay, now let's get on to this cylinder honing and be done with that. The, uh, uh, just your regular old quarter inch drill, electric in this case right here. And, uh, as you can see, it's too big, slightly too big, slightly too big for the bore. And when you're honing a cylinder, if if it takes any more than just a, just a very very short time of honing, and all you're doing here is breaking the glaze, that's all that's that's all that you can do with this type 
equipment here is break the glaze and 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 leave it with a crosshatch pattern just kind of something to give your rings a, a something to wire to the breaking the glaze is the important and the cylinder will glaze over and if you can see down in yonder there, there's a discolored uh, it's right down in yonder, and that's where the piston comes up to. And it's discolored, and if you feel in there by the fingers, it's it's hardly noticeable where that transition is. You you actually can tell it's there, but oh, it would be really hard to measure that. Uh, very very little, but it is. It's where that piston stops. Uh, not to tar anymore. And let me tell you something else too. This new motor oil that we have has so many, it's so slick that when you use motor oil, just regular off the shelf, especially the kind with the Teflon and, the, and all of these super additives in it, when you use that motor oil to hone a cylinder, that, that Teflon gets down in that cast iron right there and it's almost impossible to seat a ring in a cylinder that has had the incorrect cutting fluid used. Now there, I, and if it's if an occasion calls for it, I will I will drag out the cutting fluid. There's no, no need for me to drag out more than what's necessary for this job. And and then and what I have found out just that works really good, and your rings will seat in. And what you want a ring to do is you want that ring to wear really fast. When you first start that engine up, you want that ring to wear a lot. You want it to wear a lot on the initial running period, and then you want it to stop wearing. And the way to way to make it wear in is to use the correct cutting fluid and the correct grit of honing. With all of that said, I'm going to leave you with some homework. The uh, and I do, I do, I did lay a cloth right in yonder, but because I'm going, to, we're going to hone this, and I laid a cloth in there to catch that oil because that's really clean. And what I'm going to do up on the front right there. Just, uh, uh, I'm, go I'm putting this engine together. You may have noticed that we are putting this engine together in the raw, meaning that it's not painted, it's not primered, it's bare metal. So I, I do want to keep all of the oil off of it that I can. And I put the cloth there to catch the oil. This, the one, what I'm going to use here is. PB Blaster. I have found that to work really good. Some transmission works really good. The trick stuff, trick transmission fluid is just as bad as some of the oils are. Do the homework. Just do the homework. That's all That's all I can say is do the homework before you ruin your cylinder. And if you sit here and just go in and out, in and out, in and out, you most likely Almost every time you will get the cylinder too big for the piston. Very little. If it's any more than that, then it takes a different kind of repair. But you just spray that w, that uh, PB blaster right in there. Now WD-40 also will work in this instance. I don't like WD-40. Uh, just general. I just don't have no use for it. So I don't. Uh, and, 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 and I'm, I'm, this is the way I do it. And there is some, uh, there's some homework to do. And do your homework, save your cylinder. Leave a comment. Okay, now I'm bordering on too much because I was talking. It's better to do this right here where you can pay attention to it. And I know, I know on the backside here, I know how deep to go to not go outside of the cylinder on the counter right here. Like that. That's that's as far as I can go. Okay, that's all I'm going to do. Any more than that would be too much. Flex home. Lay you one in.
Okay, let's wipe her out. Okay, you see that? You see that black on there? That's how much that flex hone wore that cylinder that quick. Let's try to get a light in there and look at her. And the difference in the size of the cylinders, I can get my hand in these spark plug types, but I cannot get my hand in the igniter type. Okay, let's get a close-up now. 